Olivia. It's been a really long time since I've seen you today. I haven't seen you since our middle school graduation, right? If I hadn't known it was Emma, I'm pretty sure I would have gone through with it. Yeah, I know. Thank you for calling out to me. You wouldn't have recognized me right away if I'd called out to you. I'm sorry. Olivia was in a fancy group. I was surprised by the gap in our appearance. I wasn't a gal until I graduated high school. That's my black history, too. Don't dig it up. After that, I kept myself as a neat and tidy type, right? I see. It's true. You're looking very prim and proper today. I know, right? In that respect, Emma has hardly changed at all. That's why I noticed. What? You mean I haven't changed since middle school? Of course, it's a good thing. Even today, I'm running for a board position. I'm just like I was in junior high when I was on a class council. I know you don't have any mummy friends right now. But I'm sure everyone will realize that you're a dependable leader. I wonder if they will. That's right. Even if you make a lot of mom friends, you will still have to play with me, won't you? Sure. Two weeks later. I know the kids are getting used to kindergarten a lot. I was thinking, maybe we could have lunch while the kids are at kindergarten. That sounds great. Where do you want to go? I just moved back to town. I don't know much about it. I'd like Emma to introduce me if you can. Okay. I know a great place. I will make a reservation. When would you like to do it? How about next Wednesday? I got it. I'm free that day too, so let's do it. I'm looking forward to lunch with Olivia. I'm really looking forward to it too. The day of the lunch. Thank you for introducing me to this wonderful restaurant today. The food was delicious. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Wait, there is more to this story. What are you talking about? Emma said it was reasonable. I thought our budget would be around $10, but it was twice as much as $20. And it's a cost meal. You should have told me that first. I was dressed so inappropriately. I'm sorry, I should have told you that it was a cost meal. But we don't have a dress code. It wasn't out of place or anything. Yes, it was. I could feel the glances from the other tables sometimes. I think you worry too much. And what about the budget? Sorry about that too. It's been a while since I've had lunch. It's not okay. We are housewives. It's a big expense. Of course, it costs a lot. I'm sorry. I hope you understand. From now on, when you decide on a restaurant, let me check it once. Okay, I understand. I will check with you from now on. Two weeks later. Emma! I've been hearing rumors about your husband lately. Is that true? What's that? I don't know anything about the rumors. Your husband is going to be our department head at the age of 35. I don't know how people know about that. Sure, he's going to be our department head. And he works for a prestigious company, right? How does everyone know so much about my husband? I heard a husband who works for the same company as the souls, but still a department manager at 35? Isn't that impossible? I don't know all the details either, but apparently my husband is the boss's favorite. That's why he got promoted a little early. What do you mean seems like? You should be more interested in your own husband. Yeah, but... But a promotion isn't always a good thing. He has been coming home late lately. My daughter misses him. That's a luxury you can't afford. You're home on your days off, right? That's enough for me. My husband is 30 years old and has no position. He's just an ordinary employee. 
30 is still young. I'm sure he will have lots of opportunities from now on. I don't want Emma to tell me that you have a husband who is already a department head. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I see. I guess that's why you said it was reasonable when we had lunch two weeks ago. Well, when you're the boss's wife, I'm sure she'd go out for a more expensive lunch. I don't do that. I don't mind going to a family restaurant. Then, what was the restaurant two weeks ago? Were you taking advantage of me? I didn't mean it that way. I personally love their cooking. I just wanted Olivia to know about it. I'm sure you can come up with any number of excuses. I just thought it would be nice to see some of my old classmates again. I thought life would be more fun. I'm afraid that's not gonna happen. Does that mean you're not gonna have lunch with me anymore? Well, I guess so. It's not like you and I have the same money sense. I'm poor. I will stay home be quiet. Don't talk to me like that. Let's go have lunch again, okay? Leave me alone for a while. One month later. Hey, Emma. Oh my god, I've been waiting for a line from Olivia. I heard it's your anniversary next month. Yeah, how did you know that? So, you and your husband are going to a spa for your anniversary. And it's going to be a very expensive spa. Um, yes. I'm so jealous. I can't believe you're going to such an expensive spa for your anniversary. But to go to such an expensive hot spring? Mrs. Boss is different, isn't she? We only splurged this time because it was our fifth anniversary. We usually stay home. Fifth anniversary has nothing to do with it. If you say so, we had our fifth wedding anniversary too. But my husband didn't even remember. We didn't do anything like an anniversary. Why don't you complain to your husband about that? It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. What's the difference between me and Emma? Why should I be the only one who feels miserable? So, don't tell me. I don't like your attitude. Well, you will just have to wait and see. Something will happen on Emma's wedding anniversary. One month later. On Emma's wedding anniversary, I've already started staying at a nice hot spring hotel. Too bad I got that reservation on your behalf, because I'm sure you paid in advance anyway. I'm allowed to spend a lot of money, and I? Our reservation is for a day trip. What? Why would you come to such a nice luxury hotel as this for a day trip? Don't they usually stay overnight? My husband's work schedule didn't allow for it, so we had no choice but to take a day trip. But when I told the front desk I was Johnson, they showed me a nice room. By yourself? No, with Isabella. Isabella, the mummy friend that Olivia's been hanging out with lately. Yes. Her husband is very supportive. He said yes if it's just for a night or two. Could that be... But I wonder if it's possible. What are you babbling about? Maybe there was another reservation. Is that even possible? Anyway, you should check with the front desk. Okay, okay. Ten minutes later. Emma was right. I went to the front desk. There were two women in their late thirties who were really pissed off. Is that the real Miss John? Yes. Oh, what happened? I got scared, so I went back to my room. I'm not going to leave for a while. Do you know what you have done? You are taking people's reservations without... But isn't it bad enough for the innkeeper? They let us through so easily. There is no room for doubt at all, right? But it was Olivia who lied to them in the first place. You told them you were a Johnson, and then you stole the reservation. I pity the real Miss Johnson too much. 
I don't care if you pity them or not. As long as they don't find out about us, we can work it out, right? If that's all you are saying, I recall that in myself. I will tell them the ones in the room relaxing are fake. Stop it! Don't do such unnecessary things. But you're trying to keep quiet. I can't overlook something like that. Half an hour later. I get a call from the innkeeper. Emma, you're really cold. Because that's not the reservation for Olivia and her friends. I can't just sit back and let this happen. You didn't have to show your strong sense of justice here. I'm sorry. But I had to make a quick phone call. The real Johnsons just happened to have an open room in the same grade. Oh wow. You don't think that's a good thing because they had a room, do you? What? How did you know? I just thought that's what Olivia would think. No need to be sarcastic or anything. So why should I get called out when the case is closed? Because you're a fake Johnson. Why else would you get called out? But like I said before, they just accepted us as normal. They showed us to our room right away. Maybe the innkeepers didn't check enough. That's what the innkeeper said. He said it was our fault too. That's why you want to talk to the front desk. Go on, get out of here. All right, don't get so mad at me. An hour later. I'm gone. I told them that the inn was at fault for what happened today. I can stay here. That's very kind of them. But we still have to pay the bill. I would have hijacked Emma's wedding anniversary to come visit. Maybe if you hadn't wanted to pay in the first place, don't you have money for lodging? Yes, you're right. I don't have any money. And yet, we went on a spree as soon as we got to the inn. That's what you said earlier. What are you going to do with the money from your stay and your extravagant spending? Emma, this wedding anniversary incident started with Emma, didn't it? No, no, no. Don't turn someone's anniversary into an incident without my permission. So you should pay for the accommodation? I'm not paying a penny. And what about Isabella, who is coming with you? She seems kind of appalled by me. I mean, she's a good friend of yours. Hey, what should I do about tomorrow's bill? Do you have any ideas? I don't know. Why don't you ask your husband? Or your parents' house? It's hard to contact either of them. Later in the day. The next day, Olivia was told at the front desk that the room rate was half a million. The friend Olivia brought, Isabella paid the half, 250000 with her credit card, and left the hotel leaving Olivia. Olivia tried to pay the remaining with her credit card, but she had maxed out her credit card, so she couldn't pay the bill. Eventually, she was able to get her husband to wire, and she was able to go home. Her angry husband was waiting for her at home. She had to tell him about the whole incident. After he finished listening to her, the hellish sermon time started. At the kindergarten, Isabella went around and talked about the incident. Rumors spread quickly. In the end, Olivia became the outsider, both at home and in kindergarten, and she was feeling pinned. About the 250000 was paid from Olivia's saving from... Good evening! My daughter told me today that Oliver left school early. Is Oliver okay? Good evening. Thank you for making call. He's got a bit of fever and he's feeling kind of tired all over. If the same symptoms persist tomorrow, I'm going to take him to the hospital. I see. I hope it's nothing. My daughter is worried about Oliver too. Please let me know if you find anything. I will call you if I find out anything, and tell Amelia not to worry, okay? Okay, I will do that. Three days later. Hey Charlotte, Oliver has been absent for the past three days, right? Why didn't you tell me? 
He promised to let Amelia know that how he was feeling. I'm sorry, I was supposed to call you. My regular doctor's office couldn't figure out what he was wrong. He's at ABC General Hospital for tests. I've been so busy, I didn't get a chance to call you. It must have been quite a big deal for him to be in the hospital for tests. Is Oliver going to be okay? Well, I don't know yet. He's going to be in the hospital for more tests. That's very worrisome. If doctor can find the cause soon, I'm sure they will be able to decide on a cause of Is it certain that it's a disease? Yes, they are doing tests to find a name for the disease. Wow, that must be tough for Oliver. Please try not to push yourself too hard, Charlotte. Thank you. I can't wait for us to go home together. One week later. It's been almost a week since he was in ABC General Hospital. Did you find out anything about his illness? That's... It's worse than I thought. Neither he nor I have been able to accept it. That means you found out the name of his disease, right? Please tell me. I'm sorry, I can't tell you right now. He is not comfortable talking about it because he hasn't accepted it. Yeah, but you said you would tell me. Isn't that the wrong promise? I'm so sorry. I can't keep the promise. Until he is able to confront his illness in a positive way. Can you give us a minute? That means he is feeling down now, right? Yeah, yeah. He's really serious condition right now. So just leave him alone for now. I know you're worried about Amelia. I'd appreciate it if you'd cover it up somehow. Do I have to lie to Amelia too? That's not very mature of you. But I really can't tell you at this point. It's really suspicious that you're trying so hard to hide it. Maybe he has cancer or something? That is... no. Charlotte, you get too anxious. That is like saying he has cancer. So, where did he get the cancer? Can you not tell the other moms? I won't. It is called blood cancer, leukemia. Leukemia? That's a really serious disease. That's what I'm telling you. He doesn't seem to want to admit it even when I explain the name and symptoms in plain English. I need to get my act together too. I haven't been able to properly accept it. But I did not expect that one of my mom's child has got leukemia. That's a little funny. What are you talking? So I said leukemia is funny. Why do you say it's funny? Because leukemia is rare. And it's simply because it's funny. I'm sure he will have a smooth head as the treatment progresses. By the way, how long does he have left to live? First of all, we are having a serious discussion. Don't use LOL. There's nothing fun about it. Even the hair thing. Do you enjoy watching a kid's hair fall out? Don't say things like life expectancy lightly. Because I'm curious about it. My interest in leukemia is endless, LOL. So stop with the LOL. It's very offensive. Eh? What was that? Who are you to say that to me, Charlotte? How dare you deny my expression of emotion? I'm so hurt. Huh? You are hurt? I'm hurt enough as it is. You know what? Only the person who has been hurt can understand the emotional pain. The pain hurt more than in leukemia. Go ahead and say what you want. I didn't realize how rude and selfish you are. At first, I thought you were really concerned about me. The way you made fun of my son and his illness, I will never forget it. So, what are you going to do? I'm not going to chat with you anymore. What? No more chat with me? Of course not. 
If you keep sending me rude things like this, his leukemia is not going to get better, or he's going to get worse, not better. So I give you some advice. Laughing at people's misfortune is the worst thing a person can do. You try not to be any more of a jerk. Huh, so you are giving me a sermon after all. You are five years older than me, and you are giving me a sermon. You don't reflect on yourself at all, do you? I've had enough of this. I'm going to block your contact. Goodbye. One month later. Why are you barging in on me at the hospital? Wow, I have got chat from Charlotte. You unblocked my account. It was unavoidable. He's a boy. He will be fine. There are plenty of boys with shaved heads. He had a big problem with it. You don't know anything. Don't even come to the hospital from now on. I was not going to visit him today. We came to hospital because Emilia wanted to see him. I won't go along, so please don't worry. I feel sorry for Amelia, but can you tell her not to come to see him until he gets out of the hospital? Okay, okay, I understand. I won't be visiting him anymore. It's better for his health. Two months later. I wonder if I will get your message yet. It's been three months since he has been in the hospital. How is he feeling? Amelia is very worried. She insisted that she wants me to reach you. Anyway, they say cancer progresses faster when you are young, don't they? How long does he have left to live? Six months to a year? At least longer than yours. What? His treatment with anti-cancer drugs has been very successful. He is doing much better. He is on track to be released from the hospital. Amelia has been worried about him, so will you tell her about it? That's great news. So he will be discharged soon. I will let Amelia know. I think she will be happy. I cannot understand. How can you switch like that? After all, you hurt me and my son. That's simply because I was curious. People with serious illnesses are really rare and I don't have many people around me. You can't talk like that now. Did anything change recently? What do you mean? In the last two months or so, do your friends at school look at you with a cold eye? Have they stopped inviting you to lunch meetings? Come to think of it, in the last two months, no one has invited me to lunch. No one spoke to me when I went to school. What? Is there a reason for this? Do you know something about it, Charlotte? I'm a school nurse at the elementary school we all go to. You mean you're a school nurse? Yes, yes. I mean, I said a little hello to you at the entrance ceremony. You didn't recognize me at all. I only saw Amelia at the entrance ceremony. Well, I don't mind that. So the upperclassmen, the ones who use the infirmary a lot, they were worried about Oliver and me, and they came to the hospital to visit us. Wow, you are a very popular infirmary teacher. You must be pretty popular that they visit your son in the hospital. This is the only time you can joke around. On that day two months ago, a student saw the scene that you were making fun of me and Oliver. She was a sixth grader. She knew exactly what we were talking about. She told her mom about it. What does that matter? A sixth grader? She couldn't have known about me. Don't you think she will find out about Amelia? There are only two first grade classes. If she knew about Amelia, she can easily find out about you. Besides, the sixth grader's mom was a parent-teacher association leader. What? You mean... Yes, I mean, they found out that you were making fun of us. And word spread that my son and I were being bullied by you. 
So you're saying I'm not being taken seriously by anyone? Yeah, that's right. Maybe you will always be alone. Wait a minute. What about Amelia? She's fine. She goes to school every day. As for Amelia, I could tell she was really worried about Oliver. Apart from the rumors about you, she was told that she is the sweetest girl who has been worried about him for over three months. Amelia's kind hearted story is playing along, which makes Sophia's scumbagness all the more apparent. What the hell is that? It's not right that she's the only good girl. I'm the one who took her to the hospital. I worried about him too. And kind mommy friend. You still say that. When did anyone ever worry about him? You are laughing at us all the time. I told you before, didn't I? I will never forget how you laughed at my son's illness. From now on, you must reflect on your outburst. Oh no! I didn't do anything wrong! Later on, after that, the rumor about Sophia that was circulating in the school and spread to the whole town. The heartless outburst against the boy with leukemia. It reaches Sophia's husband too. The husband decided to divorce her because of the cruelty of her words. He decided to take custody of Amelia. Sophia had completely lost her place in the town and went back to her parents' house. But everyone left her when she told them about the divorce reason. And she lost her place there as well. No one knows where she has been since then. Meanwhile, Charlotte and her son are back in school. Oliver's condition was getting better, and he was able to return to school without any problems. Amelia, who had been very worried about him, is now getting along well with him at school.